So sticking with the theme of extended body tube flies, we're gonna do a deep dive into two different rigging options. I wanna show you how to do both stinger rigs for a straight tube section and also the build the beast or multi-sectioned tube section because in doing so I should be able to uh, showcase how it would work in every other format, whether that's mono or floral or even like Dacron, you get my point. But in doing so, I should be able to show you all the different things and that way we can do a little bit of discussion on the nuance of the rigging and some of the kind of decisions that you're making and the pros and cons of those decisions. I feel like I'm trying to say his name with an accent, but it's Yari Koski. Anyway, Yari uh, sent me a message and he just wanted to make a note on the durability of this rigging. So here we go. He's been doing his connections with soft floral or normal mono, like 40 to 50 pound range. He's only had one broken or lost in nine years. Hundreds of pike, striped bass, and even species like sharks caught on them. That's pretty wicked cool. So that's what we're doing here. So then at the end, I'll give you guys just a nice little teaser of how to put all this together with like a squimpish bucktail composite brush bleeding into a strong fuzzy fiber head because it'll be sick and we'll do something like that. So if you remember, one of the cons I had kind of talked about with the tubes is all of the different tube styles and all of the different needle styles or adapter kits, right? So something I want to address is what I use, right? Just to give you somewhere to start some frame of reference. So this is an HMH tube fly adapter. So it's meant to be adapted to any vise, not an HMH vise. So this works with any vise. You just clamp it in your jaws. You can see it has a nice little uh, recessed knock that'll fit just about any jaw system and it's pretty rock solid. Like this doesn't go anywhere and of course I'm tying on a very long tube. We're not tying like a little short steelhead tube or something. We're using this to cover some ground like three inches. So you need something that's going to be very rigid. Now that'll come with two different needles. It'll come with a very small needle for small tubes from HMH and it'll come with a larger needle for the large rigid tube. Now what I use is large rigid tubes from HMH. Uh, now they also have small rigid tubes. I think they're small rigid, I don't know. But I, I don't have any on hand because I've, I've always tied bigger flies. Now I had mentioned you want your tube to kind of be as small diameter as possible, right? Because that large circumference of a large tube eats up a lot of material and a lot of dubbing brush things. You want it this close to mono, but I don't have any on hand. So this is what I've been using. So I used the large rigid tube with the needle that comes with the adapter for large rigid tubes. And you can see it's not huge. It's not like some crazy, you know, the Europeans have really massive tubes for pike flies. It's not something like that. It's kind of middle of the road. Now this will come with hard ridges tubes, a bunch of them, and it will come with a soft tubing called junction tubing. Now the junction tubing can get pushed over top of your rigid tube, and then you cut it and you have maybe, you know, a quarter inch of of soft junction tubing and that's what you seat your knots into if you're using mono or you could even close your mono with a crimp and you could seat a crimp in there or you could tie your mono to a swivel and suck a swivel in there or you could tie it to a snap and then you could open and close the snap and suck the snap into there. So one of the reasons why I didn't want to try to address all of this in the first video it's because there's so many options and there really isn't a right or a wrong, but this is how the tubing is designed to work, right? Now for this rig, we're just using a single long tube. And in that first video, I addressed how this tube, because the tube can't bend, all the stress is happening at the hinge point where it's attached to the hook. Now coming in with mono or floral, that's not a problem. Those things can take a beating. They're just gonna flex. They're not gonna get kinked at all. Now you need to be a little bit careful if you came in with like single strand stainless steel, no bueno. That stuff's going to get kinked. You're going to kink it back and it's going to break very quickly. Using a multi-strand stainless steel will be fairly forgiving, but again, that reoccurring stress joint, it will fail eventually. So instead, I'm going to come in with a nickel titanium hybrid. Now this is a non-kinking wire that's very stiff that's always going to snap back to true and it can take a beating. On top of that, I'm way upping the size. I would never use like 25 pound. You can probably get away with 45, which is gonna be middle of the road, but I'm gonna come in with 65, overdress it for the sake of durability in the rigging. Now this stuff is fairly expensive, so you don't wanna waste it, but you need enough wire so that you can double it back through the hook eye so that it can't pull out. I'm gonna come in with a Gamakatsu Octopus. This happens to be a two-op, which seems to fit these rigs really well if you had it really heavily dressed, I suppose you could do a four up. And I'm gonna thread that down through the hook eye and come back out the hook eye. Come in with my 
vice grips here. I'm gonna lock on, clamp onto both of those wires with some vice grips, put that hook bend in my hooks, and I'm gonna seat that wire right up into that hook eye. So that octopus hook is gonna have a nice upturned eye. You're gonna get your wire seated in there so that that hook comes straight out, straight up. Now when you're tying your extension, there's not gonna be any junction tubing on there, right? It's just gonna be sitting flush like this. So you're gonna to wanna to leave a little bit of room back here so you can get the junction tubing on when everything's said and done. You're gonna take that off. You're gonna get the materials all out of the way. You're gonna push your junction tubing on and then you're gonna thread that finished tube with your rigging material. Again, could be mono, floral, doesn't matter. Floral, <laughs> floral, doesn't matter. And that's how everything's gonna work with that hook eye now and that titanium wire seated so that the tube cannot spin or rotate. And then these wires are gonna be threaded down and through the hook eye so they can't pull out. And then you have a kink resistant, stinger rigged, extended body fly. Pretty wicked sweet, right? And you could do this, of course, without the hook, with mono, floral, and every other material under the sun, and you can choose whether or not to use that junction tubing and kind of suck it onto a knot so it can't rotate, or just let it hang free, hard against a knot or hard against a crimp sleeve. It doesn't matter what you choose, and that way it can just kind of spin and rotate and be free to do what it wants. Totally up to you. <clears throat> now this is not meant to be like a dubbing brush instruction here. I'm just gonna tease you guys a little bit. The whole end of this series is gonna be some sick dubbing brush recipes to hopefully get you guys interested in this style of tying. So this is about as custom as a composite brush gets. We got some double grade A tail from Musky Fool throughout the whole brush blended with squimpish hair fading from tan to dark brown with a strong fuzzy fiber shoulders and head section with ripple ice fiber all the way through in two different colors, one to accent the head and the other for the body. So this is gonna be my tube tail. This is gonna be my hook and head section. And we're just gonna wrap these guys on and that's the fly. I'm going to get it on the tube as far as I can, push it all the way up to that no nose, uh, and then I'm gonna get some light pressure on it and then push it into that knife blade while locking it in. So there's a little blade right here that'll dig into that tube and stop it from being able to rotate. Now I still need to get my thread started and tie in a quick tail section of squimpish hair. Remember to save room for your junction tubing here. Look at that squimpish hair. Is that not insane? That's insane. Make it a little bit wide. Drape it around that tube. Whenever you drape it loose, it's really hard to come up and not catch material with your thread. So just try to get it up there. And you use the same bucktail technique to move everything around. Pinch and pull, flip it over, make sure your densities are the same all the way around. Now I'm gonna put down a thread base going backwards, which is gonna make a nice little thread valley. Come in with a push tool here. Make sure the hair's being flared evenly in all directions. Pull that into that thread valley you just made. And then you're gonna make basically a rimmed cartridge right there. Hence the bullet tie. I don't actually know why they call it the bullet tie, but that's what I call it. Don't know why. Anytime you're working with these crazy long dubbing brushes, don't play around. Now because my vice grip has a solid hold on this, like if this was a dubbing loop, I normally wouldn't preen it like this. I would just take it one turn at a time, but because I have those vice grips on there, 
I'm gonna preen all of that hair off to one side, make it super clean. You can see the core of my brush. It's a nice sparse brush for being able to do this. And I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna make sure that my vice grips don't kink this wire. I'm not gonna move this. I'm just gonna keep it straight. So all my hands always gonna be right here. That way I don't kink that wire and have it fail. Gonna focus on a nice clean turn here at the bottom. And then I'm just gonna set an angle and open wrap that all the way up the tube section. I'm gonna take like three, yeah, there, bucktail, like three passes with my thread, pull up and down at the same time, really suck it in there, release those suckers. And I'll just jackknife that forward so I can come, cut it, leave a tag end so that you can push it back and tie that wire down twice. That's a disgusting tail section, like just absolutely ridiculous. <clears throat> now with your tubes, you're gonna wanna cut that back towards your thread, not super tight to your thread, but back towards your thread, just to clean it up. And then you're gonna take a lighter and you're gonna bead up, sorry, I shouldn't talk, You're going to bead up the leading edge of that tube. Don't light your tube on fire and don't heat it so close to the thread that the tube melts underneath the thread and then your thread collapses. You're just trying to bead up the edge in front of it so nothing can ever slip off. And then we got to put our junction tubing on the back. And then we'll come in with our stinger rig on our titanium wire. Check that out. Stinger rig, titanium, squimpish hair, bucktail, composite, brushed tube extension. Now one of the coolest things about this rigging is a typical stinger hook rig. You have all this hook weight on all this wire with no water resistance and you have all the water resistance on the front hook. So when you strip it the hook tends to stall out and the back tends to sag. But now we've dressed the entire connection and put all of this water resistance balancing out this 2 watt stinger. So none of this is free to sag anymore and you should get some pretty cool back and forth seesaw interplay between your, the weight of your front hook and the weight of your back hook. And the goal is to get them more or less balanced. Now if running this hook up tends your front hook to not keel right, you can add some keel weight and you'll have to play with that. Should it be hook down? Should it be hook up? Do you want, you know, are you balancing a hook up percentages versus how the hook is riding? And if you need front keel weight to get your balance, that's all gonna depend on how dense you dress it, how, how dense your brushes are, if you're choosing to stack it, your material selection, your hook options. <laughs> like, I can't really go into that because everybody's gonna do it different. I'm willing to do it hook up because I'm willing to add keel weight and do things on the water and, well, learn. You just learn, trial and error. So it doesn't really matter to me. It's a six out, two feet, six, 10. I'm gonna push both of those down through the hook eye I want that tube to be as close to that bend as I can because I want a seamless transition. My rear hook is up. So I'm just going to start trapping that down and I'm going to walk it up towards the hook eye under as much pressure as I can with this 6,000 thread. use the vice grips to put tension on it so I can suck it back as tight as I can and get the cleanest catch that I can through that hook eye so that I can use the biggest tippet or I can use snaps or you can use whatever you want but try to keep that hook eye open if you can. If you guys can't tell we're not fly tying anymore we are lure building okay vice grips, nippers, crimps, lighters this is we're, we're going ham here there are no rules in streamer fly fishing, none whatsoever. Break all the rules. Just take the rule book, throw it out. That's for dry fly crap, okay? We're tying streamers here. I put down a really big base at the back of that wire where all the stress is gonna be. I'm just gonna keep putting down more base. I really want that reinforced. And if I built this brush correctly, all we gotta do is wrap it on.
So that is the finished results. Absolutely disgusting. I'm gonna, uh, as soon as I'm done with this, I'm gonna go put it in the drink. Maybe I'll throw a little uh, sneak peek at the end of what it looks like after it's been hung dry. Uh, but that's how I've been rigging the tubes. HMH uh, adapter, HMH large rigid tubes, using the junction tubing to seat uh, either a hook and stinger rig or a knot, like a perfection loop tied into the mono or the floral. Um, and that's it, right there. Stinger hook, composite brush, beast.